To write the Lewis structure for MgBr2, magnesium bromide, let's write Mg and then put Br on either side. Magnesium, that's a metal, and then bromine, that's a nonmetal. So when we have a metal attached to nonmetals, that's an ionic compound. And in an ionic compound, valence electrons are transferred. So magnesium, that's in group two. It has two valence electrons. And then bromine, that's in group 17, sometimes called 7A. It has seven valence electrons. So we said that in an ionic compound, valence electrons are transferred from the metal to the nonmetals. So in this case, magnesium, that'll transfer one valence electron to this bromine. And now this bromine has eight valence electrons, has a full outer shell, which is very stable. The other valence electron with the magnesium, that gets transferred to this bromine, which also now has eight valence electrons. The magnesium has lost two electrons, and electrons are negative. Because of this, it now has a two plus charge. And the bromines, they've gotten an electron. Each one of them has received one of these electrons, so they have a negative charge. So these charges all cancel out and give us this neutral molecule. Because we have charges, negatives and then positives, the negatives are attracted to the positive, and that's what forms these ionic bonds here. We need to put brackets around the bromide ions. We do this to show that the electrons have been transferred. They're now with the bromine, that they aren't shared like you might see in a covalent compound. Sometimes you'll also see brackets around the positive ion. And that makes this the Lewis structure for MgBr2, magnesium bromide. Note that this is what we call a formula unit. In a crystal, we have a bunch of these formula units in a repeating pattern. This is Dr. V with the Lewis structure for MgBr2, magnesium bromide. Thanks for watching.